On my Greenland expedition, I brought a rope. I used an eight millimeter, 30 meter rope that was more than enough for glacier travel. When my buddy and I, Terry Williams, skied across Greenland, we both each brought one rope in the event that we had a crevasse fall. We also roped each other together, and you can read about that in my book, Two Friends and a Polar Bear, but we had to bring ropes in case of crevasse falls because near the coast, it was possible that we could ski over a crevasse, and if things went really bad, we'd fall in but we were roped together and we had very heavy sleds so that there was a good chance. Now, I didn't bring a heavy, like a 10 point, uh, 10 millimeter or 11 millimeter rope or even a nine. We only brought an eight millimeter rope, a climbing rope. I used the Beal rope and I love this thing because relative to ropes, it is super, super light. It is easy to handle and of course it looks very nice. But do know that this is a twin rope, so it, if we're gonna do climbing, we'd need to double this bad boy up in order to climb safe. But for glacier travel, tying this boy, uh, bad boy on, on our climbing harness and attaching it through our sled and to the other allowed us to safely travel so that way if one or the other fell through a crevasse, hopefully we'd be able to stop, use an ice axe, like one of our ice axes over there, and create a Z-drag pulley system to get the other person out. Now, there are a couple of different options for climbing ropes and glacier travel ropes. The nice thing about the glacier travel rope is generally the fall isn't too severe, not always, sometimes it can be bad, but this rope should be able to handle that no problem. So even though it's a twin rope, twin rope means it's for climbing and where you're actually going to take real falls. Usually when you're going along glacier, all of a sudden, blah! and you fall into a crevasse or a hole, and this rope will save your bacon. So that is definitely a thing. Now, let me show you just how heavy this is. And pretty much it's dead weight for most of the expedition. All right, scale locked. All right, so we had to carry a two pound, eight ounce rope, or my, for my European friends, a 1.1 kilogram rope, most of the time for no other reason than just to have it. So that was a real annoyance of, oh, I gotta carry this rope. Now two, when we're towing sleds and skiing along in our skis, trying to keep the distance right with the rope is really, really annoying. Because if the back person skis too fast, they start to ski over the rope and you end up in a mess. And if the back person is too slow and slow and slow, then the front person gets yanked and you start to get irritated. So one of the things about glacier travel, whether it's a ski expedition or climbing or hiking, is you if you're the really slow person, you're gonna have a tough time. If you're the fastest person, you gotta have infinite patience and you cannot get annoyed. Because without this rope, you fall into a crevasse, you could meet the big dark and St. Peter's gates and all, which you don't wanna do. <laughs> Check out links below to all my equipment, aaronlinsdo.com slash Greenland, where you too can learn about all of our equipment that we used on our expedition. I love my little Beal climbing rope. I take this thing when I go hiking sometimes, knowing that I want one to rappel down a cliff, and I'll show you some other gear about that too. So yes, on a ski expedition, you have to bring climbing gear. That's just how it works. Thank you very much for watching. Please like, comment, subscribe to the channel so you can get more info like this.